I'm Vanessa from SpeakEnglishWithVanessa.com. Are you ready to schedule a doctor's appointment? Let's do it. Talking on the phone and especially doing some professional business on the phone can be really intimidating. It can be intimidating for you as an English learner, but it's also intimidating for me as a native English speaker. I sometimes feel a little bit nervous on the phone. I'm not exactly sure what to say. So before I talk on the phone, I need to take a deep breath, think about what I'm going to say. And today I would like to give you that same type of preparation help. You're going to be watching me book an eye doctor appointment for my husband, Dan. I call the eye doctor on the phone and we go through the process of booking an appointment for him. I want to explain some of the expressions that we use, some of the questions that we use, and if you ever need to book an appointment on the phone for a doctor's office or for a hotel or book anything on the phone, I hope this will give you some extra confidence so that you can do it. Because really, if you take a deep breath, you got it. All right, let's watch the conversation that I had on the phone with the eye doctor's secretary and then we're going to pause and I'm going to explain some important expressions to you that I think would be helpful for your daily conversations. All right, let's watch. All right, I'm going to be attempting to make an eye doctor appointment for my husband, Dan. I already scheduled an appointment for myself and I wanted to share that with you, but I forgot to record it and I can't go back now, so I'm going to also make an appointment for my husband, Dan, and I want you to listen carefully, hear what they have to say on the phone, the questions they ask, and I hope to help you along the way so that you can use these expressions yourself. All right, let's see what happens. Triangle Vision of Asheville, this is Emma. How can I help you? Hi, I was calling to make an eye doctor appointment. Already, have you been seen by us before? All right, we're off to a fast start, huh? <laughs> so the first question that she asked me is, have you been seen by us before? Now, this isn't a little joke because they're an eye doctor and she asked, have you been seen by us? No, this is just a common question that means, are you a current patient at this doctor's office? So it's not because they're a vision doctor, an eye doctor. And this means, yeah, are you a current patient? Have you been seen by us? Let's take a look at another sample sentence where you can use this sentence construction. If the secretary on the phone asks you, are you a current patient? You could say, no, I haven't been seen by you before. That doesn't mean they have not looked at you. They have not seen you. No, it just means you're not a current patient. Or if you are a current patient and they say, oh, are you a new patient? You could say, no, I've been seen by you before, but it's been a long time. All right, let's watch that clip one more time. Listen for the question, have you been seen by us before? And then we're gonna continue and you can watch the next part. Let's watch. Triangle Visions of Asheville, this is Emma, how can I help you? Hi, I was calling to make an eye doctor appointment. Already, have you been seen by us before? I have not. I'm actually calling to make an appointment for my husband. I have a scheduled appointment for myself, but I wanted to make a second one for him. Okay, gotcha. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's just a little tricky with spouses. Is he um, available? Because unfortunately, because he is a legal adult, um, he would either need to authorize you to make the appointment or he would need to make it himself. Ah, okay. Um, would authorization mean he just needs to hop on the phone and say yes? <laughs> All right, so we have a little difficulty here because I'm making the appointment for my husband. Usually this is not a problem when it's a haircut appointment or something that's a little less formal, but with doctor's offices, it might be a little more serious because there's some regulations they have to comply with. Not everyone has access to your medical data and this secretary is thinking that maybe this includes booking appointments. So I wanted to ask, what does authorization mean? Sometimes this just means that the other person needs to send an email, maybe you need to have an official document, 
or maybe they just need to say, hey, yeah, she can book the appointment for me, but I'm too busy to do it myself. So I used a wonderful phrasal verb to hop on. <laughs> I said, does he just need to hop on the phone and say yes? Maybe he can just say, yes, she can book an appointment. That's it. I said hop on because this means something quick, some type of quick action. We use that full expression to hop on the phone, but we can also use it in other ways. You might say to get to the park, you just have to hop on the bus. You can use it for transportation like this, to hop on the bus, to hop on the train, to hop on a plane even, if you're making a quick decision to just hop on a plane. When I heard that there was trouble, I hopped on a plane immediately. It's this type of quick, easy action. All right, let's watch that clip one more time and then we'll continue with the conversation. I'm actually calling to make an appointment for my husband. I have a scheduled appointment for myself, but I wanted to make a second one for him. Okay, gotcha. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's just a little tricky with spouses. Is he um, available? Because unfortunately, because he is a legal adult, um, he would either need to authorize you to make the appointment or he would need to make it himself. Ah, okay. Um, would authorization mean he just needs to hop on the phone and say yes? <laughs> um, pretty much, yeah. He would just need to, um, well, hmm. I don't have it in my system, so I, actually, let me ask real quick if you don't mind. Okay. Let's talk about two points in this quick clip. She said, let me ask real quick. Just to let you know, the correct grammar is really quick, but in daily English conversation, sometimes we just say real quick. We use real with something else, like, oh, it's a real beautiful day today. It's a real beautiful, it should be, it's a really beautiful day, but you will hear English speakers use real instead of really, even though it's grammatically incorrect. Personally, I don't recommend that you use this, but if you hear it, you'll know what's happening and you'll understand, and it's just kind of a, a really casual type of conversational language. Let's talk about that last sentence that she said, if you don't mind. This is simply a polite comment. I don't have a choice. It sounds like she's giving me a choice. I can ask or I don't need to ask, but really she's not giving me a choice. She's just letting me know, hey, I'll be right back. So she could have said, just a moment, I'll be right back. That's totally fine too. But she said, if you don't mind, and she's not waiting for an answer. <laughs> she just says, if you don't mind, and then I say, okay. And then she goes and asks for permission about this situation. So this is a really nice kind of just filler expression to be polite, hey, if you don't mind. Okay, let's watch that clip and then we'll continue with the conversation where you will hear a very important phone verb. Let's watch. I'm actually calling to make an appointment for my husband. I have a scheduled appointment for myself, but I wanted to make a second one for him. Okay, gotcha. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's just a little tricky with spouses. Is he um, available? Because unfortunately, because he is a legal adult, um, he would either need to authorize you to make the appointment or he would need to make it himself. Ah, okay. Um, would authorization mean he just needs to hop on the phone and say yes? <laughs> Um, pretty much, yeah. He would just need to, um, well, hmm, because I don't have it in my system, so I, actually, let me ask real quick, if you don't mind. Okay. Yeah, you'll just hold just a second. Another quick sentence. <laughs> she said, if you'll hold just a second. Am I holding something in my hands? No. She's asking just to wait. This is a common phone verb that means you're waiting on the phone. So let's take a look at some common sentences using hold that you'll most likely hear on the phone in this type of situation. Do you mind holding for a moment? I'm not holding something in my hands. <laughs> Instead, do you mind waiting for a moment? But because we use hold on the phone, this is a more common verb. Do you mind holding for a moment? Do you mind holding for a second? Or you might just hear the simple sentence, please hold. I've gotten this often on the phone when a place is really busy. Let's say you're making a restaurant re reservation and they're super busy and you call, they might just pick up the phone and say, uh, you know, the name of the restaurant and then please hold, nothing else. They don't wait for a reply. They just say, please hold. <laughs> and that means you gotta wait because they're really busy. 
Um, if you would like to see about how to order food on the phone in English, I made another one of these lessons where I ordered food on the phone and then I explained some expressions to you. You can watch that video up here. A lot of you found that very useful and I hope that you will too. So you can use just please hold, very simple, straightforward, especially if you're extremely busy, but we can put this in a bigger phrase. Someone might say, or if you're a secretary, you might say, I'm going to put you on hold for a moment. This phrase to put you on hold is the same idea. Please wait. <laughs> Maybe they're going to push the hold button on the phone. That's kind of what this means. All right, I'm going to put you on hold for just a moment. Ask this question and then I'll be back. I'm going to put you on hold for a moment. So it just lets the other person know that they haven't disappeared, but you're just going to have to wait for a moment. And finally, a common one is thank you for holding. And this is pretty self-explanatory. After the person comes back on the phone, then they are going to thank you for waiting. Thank you for holding. And you will see this or rather hear this expression in just a minute. So let's review that sentence. You'll hear it again and then we'll move on with the conversation and listen for this great phrase. Thank you for holding. All right, let's watch. Yeah, you'll just hold just a second. So I could have Dan make the appointment. He is just in the other room, but I wanted to share it with you. So we'll see what happens. This is a good test. <laughs> okay, thank you for holding. Yeah, so clear that up with them. And yeah, actually we should be good. So long as we're just making an appointment, we should be all right. Okay, all right. All right. Okay, so yeah, just I'd never wanna slack off on the HIPAA stuff, so I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> no problem. In this section you heard, we would be good, we should be all right. This type of phrase, to be good, to be all right, or to be okay, just means everything's fine, everything's correct. We can even use this in a really casual situation that you'll probably hear a lot in movies, TV shows, and you can use it too. If you're just walking and someone bumps you, they might say, oh, sorry. And what can you say to reply to them? They bumped into you. You could say, it's okay, no problem. Or you can use this phrase and you could say, it's okay, you're good. You're good is a very casual way to say, I forgive you. <laughs> Usually we use forgive for pretty serious things, but it's a casual way to say that, oh, no worries, you're good. This means I'm fine, I'm not hurt, forget about it. It's totally fine. Oh, you're good. This is a really casual way to say this. You could also interchange, oh, you're all right, you're okay, but I think you're good is probably more common in this bumping situation. Oh, you're good. You'll hear this a lot. There's another great phrasal verb that I'd like to share with you, and it is to slack off. <laughs> I love this one. Uh, this means that you are not careful about something. And it's not about danger. It usually means like laziness or forgetfulness. So we use this often in school situations. You might say, yeah, I got uh, a perfect score on my first test in English class. So I thought I'm great at English. I don't need to study. So I slacked off and the next test I failed. <laughs> this means I was lazy. I was not attentive. I was not careful about studying because I thought everything's fine. It's fine. No problem. I can slack off and I'll still get a good grade, but really I shouldn't have slacked off. We can sometimes just uh, give a warning. Don't slack off. Don't slack off. You need to stop slacking off and get to work. <laughs> so on the phone, the secretary was saying, I don't want to slack off on HIPAA stuff, but what? Is HIPAA? Let me tell you. HIPAA. <laughs> HIPAA, that stands for, I looked it up, Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. <laughs> Basically, this is like medical privacy, that if your neighbor calls your doctor's office, they can't say, hey, can you tell me the medical records for my neighbor? No, <laughs> this is private information and this law, this act, is basically protecting you. So whenever you go to a doctor's office, when you make an appointment or when you fill out some forms, there will hopefully be a HIPAA form. And 
the secretary will probably tell you this. All right, fill out these forms with your medical history and sign this HIPAA form. And it, sh it says, I agree to have my medical information be private. That's the general idea, I think. <laughs> so it's saying, I agree that this should be private. But if there is a situation where you want someone else to have access to your medical information, maybe your husband or wife or mother or something like this, then there's often a, a section where you can write, this person also can have access to my data. So if your husband calls the doctor's office and says, hey, did you get the lab results for my wife? I'd like to know what they are. Well, if his name is not given permission to see that, they'll say, no, we can't tell you. It's a private thing. It's under this act. <laughs> But if he has permission, if you have given legal permission on this form, then they can tell him over the phone. Then that's not a problem. He'll probably need to verify who he is, that he's not your neighbor. <laughs> but in this situation, it's just uh, keeping your information private. All right, let's watch that section one more time. Listen for those useful expressions, and then we'll go on to the next section where you'll hear some more valuable parts of booking an appointment on the phone. Let's watch. Okay, thank you for holding. Yeah, so clear that up with them. And yeah, actually, we should be good. So long as we're just making an appointment, we should be all right. Okay, all right. All right. Okay, so yeah, I just I never want to slack off on the HIPAA stuff, so I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> no problem. All righty. So um, what is his last name? It's Prothe, P-R-O-T-H-E. Alrighty, what is the first name? Daniel. Gotcha. And what is his date of birth? It's 4187. Okay, great. Alrighty, and I'll link up the addresses here. And what is um your first name? Vanessa. Okay, I want you to notice two things that happened in this section. The first one was that I spelled my last name. If your last name is unusual, especially maybe difficult to spell for an American, it's a very vague sentence, but you know, something that might not be extremely common in the US, be prepared to spell your last name and also your first name. But I didn't spell Daniel or Vanessa because those are commonly known in the US and people most likely know how to spell them. If you don't want to spell your name, then you can wait until they ask you, but because it's a doctor's office appointment, usually you want them to spell your name correctly and to have everything accurate for you know medical reasons. So if you think maybe your last name or your first name is difficult to spell, just practice spelling it in advance so that when you go to the appointment, they can easily find you. There's one more thing. When I said Dan's date of birth, so that's how she asked me, it's kind of a formal way. She didn't say, when's his birthday? She said, what's his date of birth? This is common for a doctor's office. I said, 4187. Do you think that his birthday is January 4th? Or do you think his birthday is April 1st? Unfortunately, the US is not very logical <laughs> about dates and we use month, day, year. I know that almost the rest of the world says day, month, year, and this makes so much sense. <laughs> but unfortunately in the US, we don't do it like that. So his birthday is April 1st, 1987. You can use this. You can say the specific numbers of your date of birth, or you can just say April 1st, 1987, totally fine. If I ever need to give a date for someone who's from another country, and I'm not certain if they are using day, month, year, or month, day, year, I just say the full thing. September 4th, 1987, that's my birthday. So I will say the full date, and maybe that would be a little bit safer for you because if you tell the doctor's office the wrong birthday, and when you go to the office, they verify your identity with your birthday, 
uh, that could cause a problem. They might say, oh, you're not the same person because your birthday's wrong. So try to be as clear as possible about the day. And if you're not, if you're not uh, comfortable saying 4187 because maybe it's January, maybe it's April, <laughs> just say the full thing. That's totally fine. All right, let's go back and watch this clip where I spelled our last name and I gave Dan's date of birth and then we'll continue with the conversation. Let's watch. So um, what is his last name? It's Prothe, P-R-O-T-H-E. Alrighty, what is the first name? Daniel. Gotcha. And what is his date of birth? It's 4187. Okay, great. Alrighty, and I'll link up the addresses here. And what is um your first name? Vanessa. Gotcha. And the um address is That's right. Okay, great. Alright, so I'm gonna link that up. And what's the best phone number to reach him by? Um, 412. Alrighty. And is that a phone number that he's okay with receiving text, uh, text reminders on? Yes. Okay, great. Alright, so I've got that set up for him. Alrighty. And, um, will he be doing the out-of-pocket as well? Yes. Gotcha. You just heard a great expression, out of pocket. What is in my pocket? What do you think she's saying? Are you taking something out of your pocket? No, this means that all of the expenses for the medical visit, I will pay by myself without insurance. So let's talk about payment. When you go to the doctor's office, you have two choices. You can pay with your insurance, if you have insurance, or you can pay out of pocket. So for me, I have general health insurance, but that does not include eye insurance. So when I go to the eye doctor, I need to pay out of pocket. And she knows this because I've already booked an appointment for myself and in their system, it says out of pocket. It says, you know, Vanessa does not have eye insurance, so she will pay out of pocket. I imagine in their computer system, there's two options, insurance, out of pocket, and they probably clicked out of pocket. So they know, or they're guessing, that my husband, Dan, also will be paying out of pocket. And if you are simply visiting the US and you have no insurance, this is what you'd say. So they'd ask you, do you have insurance or do you have your insurance card with you? And I say, no, I'm paying out of pocket. Great, this is very clear and this is the typical medical expression. Whenever you pay out of pocket, they will most likely tell you the full price for your visit in advance. If they don't, it's okay to ask. I always do <laughs> because I'm going to be paying in cash at that moment, so I want to know how much it will be. But usually they'll tell you, and you're about to see that in just a moment, she'll tell me the full price for the visit because I'm gonna be paying out of pocket, I need to know. And if they don't tell you, feel free to ask, hey, by any chance, can you tell me how much is the price for this visit? And they'll tell you. If they don't know, well, that's another problem. <laughs> you can probably dig a little bit deeper or maybe you should go to somewhere else that's a little more clear. But in general, most places will tell you the full price for an out-of-pocket payment. All right, let's watch that clip one more time and we'll go on to the next one where you'll hear some more details about the payment. Let's watch. Alrighty, and is that a phone number that he's okay with receiving text, uh, text reminders on? Yes. Okay, great. All right, so I've got that set up for him. Alrighty. And um, will he be doing the out-of-pocket as well? Yes. Gotcha. Alrighty, and is um, he a contact lens wearer? Yes, right now he wears glasses and occasionally wears the daily contacts. Um, so I'm sure he'd like to have an appointment to see all of that, like get an appointment for contacts and just a general eye exam. That would be great. 
Okay, gotcha. And just to um, give you a heads up there, um, so the exam itself, um, that would include seeing the doctor and getting your glasses prescription, all of that, um, that's 99 out of pocket. Um, the contact lens exam um, is its own separate charge. Um, since he's worn contacts before, you'd be looking at um, 75 for if he gets fit for a standard lens or 120 if he gets fit for a specialty lens. Okay. Alrighty, and that would also include any follow-up visits that he may need for that. Oh, gotcha. Okay. All right, in this section, you heard a little bit more details about the payment for this eye doctor's visit. She used a really great expression that you're gonna hear a lot in daily conversation, and that is to give a heads up, to give a heads up. And this is usually a warning. It's not always something that's really seriously negative, but let's take this example that you, you don't like dogs, or maybe you're a little bit allergic to dogs and you're about to go to your neighbor's dinner party. Your neighbor might say, oh, I just want to give you a heads up that my uncle is bringing his dog to our party. This is like a little warning. It's not something super serious. It's not, there's a cliff. Don't fall off the cliff. I want to give you a heads up. No, no, no. That's really serious. That's just watch out. <laughs> but if there's something that you want to warn someone out about a little bit, you can say a heads up. So that's why she used it about the payment. She wanted to maybe have a indirect or polite way to start talking about how much I will be required to pay. So she said, I just want to give you a heads up. I just want to give you a notice or a warning that this is how much the, the visit will cost. And then she used a great expression. You're looking at 75 if he wears standard lenses. So this is the price, $75 for part of the appointment. <laughs> so she said, you're looking at, is this another clever expression with vision and eye doctor you're looking at now. <laughs> this just is a, a polite way to talk about money. So let me give you another sample sentence. If you go to a car dealership and you buy a car, the car salesman might say, you're looking at 15,000 before tax. So the price of the car is $15,000 before tax. But instead of saying, the price of this car is $15,000 before tax, it's a more casual way and maybe kind way to talk about price. You're looking at, you're looking at 15,000 before tax. And it's also a roundabout number. Maybe the eye doctor's appointment will be $80. Maybe it will be 70. She gave a specific number 75. So I imagine that it will, this will probably be 75, but for other purchases like a car, it might be a little more indirect. You're looking at, 15,000 before tax. All right, let's go back and watch this clip and then we'll go on to the next one. All righty, and is um, he a contact lens wearer? Yes, right now he wears glasses and occasionally wears the daily contacts. Um, so I'm sure he'd like to have an appointment to see all of that, like get an appointment for contacts and just a general eye exam, that would be great. Okay, gotcha. And just to um, give you a heads up there, um, so the exam itself, um, that would include seeing the doctor and getting your glasses prescription, all of that, um, that's 99 out of pocket. Um, the contact lens exam um, is its own separate charge. Um, since he's worn contacts before, you'd be looking at um, 75 for if he gets fit for a standard lens or 120 if he gets fit for a specialty lens. Okay. Alrighty. And that would also include any follow-up visits that he may need for that. Oh, gotcha. Okay. All right, okay. And let's look for an appointment for him. Um, did you want me to try to schedule y'all both together or just uh, book him a separate appointment? Um, probably a separate appointment would be best. Okay, gotcha. And is there um, a preferred time frame or um, day of the week you'd like me to be looking at? If there's any afternoon that's available, that would probably be good anytime after, yeah, in the afternoon. In this clip, I said two very similar expressions. I said, that would be good, that would be best. <laughs> and this is a really just a polite way to say, yes, that's what I want. And often we kind of use indirect language like this when we're doing something professional. So let me give you a couple examples. When can we have a meeting? I think Friday would be best. Oh, this is great, very polite. I think Friday would be best. 
just very simple and clear, but it's also polite. Or if you're booking a hotel and the secretary on the phone says, you can check in at 10 a.m. or 2 p.m. Well, you could say, hmm, I think 2 p.m. would be good. I think 2 p.m. would be good. You could just say, 2 p.m. please. That's fine. <laughs> but this great expression, I think 2 p.m. would be good, is another one you can use. All right, let's go back and watch this clip and continue with the conversation. We're almost done. You got this. Let's watch. Okay, let's look for an appointment for him. Um, did you want me to try to schedule y'all both together or just uh, book him a separate appointment? Um, probably a separate appointment would be best. Okay, gotcha. And is there um, a preferred time frame or um, day of the week you'd like me to be looking at? If there's any afternoon that's available, that would probably be good anytime after, yeah, in the afternoon. Gotcha. All right, let's see. All right, so it looks like my uh, first afternoon appointment I've got available. I have Tuesday the 4th at 1.30. Okay, Tuesday the 4th at 1.30. Um, yeah, that seems fine. Let's go with okay, that. Okay, great. All righty, I'm going to put them there. I said, let's go with that. Did you hear me say that? Let's go with that. And this is just, that's the one I want to choose. We often use this expression, go with, when we're ordering something. So you'll hear this often in a restaurant and you can use this in a restaurant too. You might say, I'll go with the steak and salad, please. I'll go with. It doesn't mean that you are taking the steak and salad to go and taking it home. It just means this is what I choose. This is what I want to order. I'll go with the steak and salad, please. Excellent. This is a great way to use this phrase. Okay, let's go back and watch and then continue our conversation. All right, so it looks like my uh, first afternoon appointment I've got available. I have Tuesday the 4th at 1.30. Okay, Tuesday the 4th at 1.30. Um, yeah, that seems fine. Let's go with okay, that. great. All righty, I'm going to put them there. And about how long are those appointments? Um, I'd say about 45 minutes average. Um, it also sort of depends um, if he wants to pick out, you know, glasses frames or anything like that at the end, that would extend the time a little bit. But sure. on average, I'd say about 45 minutes around there. Okay, that's great. Why did I ask about how long will this appointment be? This is not a necessary question. And really, I just asked this for my own personal knowledge because while Dan is at the doctor's office, I will be watching the kids. So I wanted to know, you know, do we have time to be dropped off at a park and then he can pick us up? Or what do we have time to do while he's gone? So I just wanted to know, and I wanted to show you too, that if you have any questions for the secretary when you're booking these types of appointments, feel free to ask. As you can see, this lady is extremely kind and polite and it w it's no problem to ask a question. So if you have any, don't worry about asking, just ask and that way you're not guessing or wondering about something you know. All right, let's continue with the conversation. And about how long are those appointments? Um, I'd say about 45 minutes average. Um, it also sort of depends um, if he wants to pick out, you know, glasses frames or anything like that at the end, that would extend the time a little bit, but sure. on average I'd say about 45 minutes around there. Okay, that's great. Alrighty. Okay, I have got him booked for Tuesday the 4th at 1.30. Is there anything else I can do for you? That's it. Alright, we are coming to the end of the conversation and she asked, is there anything else I can do for you? And I said, that's it. That's it. I didn't need to say, no, that's it. I could have said that, but this expression, that's it, means I'm finished. Everything is complete. <laughs> so when you're ordering at a restaurant, you can also use this. Let's go back to our previous example where you say, I'll go with the steak and salad, please. And then your waiter says, would you like a glass of wine to go with that? And you say, no, that's it. You're saying, I don't want the wine. I'm finished. I just want the steak and salad. No, that's it. This is a great expression to use to just politely say, I'm done. Nope, this is it. That's all that I want. All right, let's watch that clip one more time and we have finished our conversation. Let's watch. All righty. Okay, I have got him booked for Tuesday the 4th at 1.30. Is there anything else I can do for you? That's it. All righty, looks great. Well, you have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much, you too. Thank you, goodbye. Bye. Success, yes. <laughs> 
Congratulations on following me on this journey of booking a doctor's appointment on the phone. For me, sometimes I do feel a little nervous in these situations, so if you feel a little nervous, don't worry, it is perfectly normal, <laughs> but I hope that this lesson will help you to prepare a little bit. So now I have a question for you. Tell me, do you like booking appointments over the phone? Even in your native language, how do you feel? Do you feel comfortable with this type of thing or do you feel a little bit nervous? Let me know in the comments. I can't wait to read to see what you have to say. We are all human around the world. We all have similar feelings and experiences. Well, thank you so much for learning English with me and I'll see you again next Friday for a new lesson here on my YouTube channel. Bye. The next step is to download my free ebook, Five Steps to Becoming a Confident English Speaker. You'll learn what you need to do to speak confidently and fluently. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more free lessons. Thanks so much. Bye.